Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel and I'm really excited because we have Ole back on the on the podcast with us and uh, Bruno is joining as well uh, from Cube Shop. Uh, before we get started, uh, today we're going to talk about testing in Kubernetes. Uh, but before we get started, would you like to tell our li- viewers a little bit more about yourself? How about we start with Ole? Sure. Uh, Kunal, it's great to be back. Thanks for having us. Um, I'm CTO at KubeShop, uh, a company that's been around for almost 10 months now uh, and focusing on building open source projects for the cloud native space. Uh, so uh, TestCube is one of those projects. Super excited to be here and talk about it. We've shown you Monocle before and we have other cool things uh, in the oven as well. Cool. So uh, I'm Kunal. Uh, I'm Bruno. Uh, nice to see you again. Uh, for those that don't know me, I'm uh, Bruno. I, I'm uh, working in Kubernetes for several years now. I'm the product leader for TestTube. Joined the, the project a few months ago. Um, it's early at early stages, and uh, yeah, we are here today to, to show you how it works. Awesome. And uh, we did a bunch of content on uh, Monocle already. Um, make sure you check out the links in the description. But let's get started. So test cube, right? I'm just going to add the screen Thanks. over here. Uh, let's, let's talk a little bit more about it. What it is, what are the issues it's trying to solve, and how folks can get started. OK, great. Well, so um, test cube is, you know, we'd like to say it's a friendly <laughs> cloud native testing framework for Kubernetes. So the background here is I've worked a lot with testing tools. Uh, I was at a company called SmartBear for many years. Um, with, you know, both, you know, very tactical tools to create like functional tests and load tests and that stuff like that, but also more test management and orchestration and execution. And when I started working with Kubernetes, it felt like there is kind of a gap here. There aren't really any testing tools or frameworks that try that leverage kind of the, the opportunities that you might have in the Kubernetes or cloud native space. So that's kind of where test cube came from uh, as an idea and as a, as a need. Uh, obviously, there are a lot of great testing tools out there and test cube kind of tries to bring those into Kubernetes, as you'll see. So it basically, it's, it's, a, it's a Kubernetes-focused test execution framework. Uh, and what that means is that uh, it, it'll take all your existing tests, right? So if you have tests, uh, currently we support Postman, Cypress, and K6, uh, but we're adding support for a lot of other kinds of tests. And it's it's a, the architecture is modular, so it's easy to add uh, other types of tests. Uh, uh, TestTube will run those tests inside your cluster. So instead of running uh, tests from outside your cluster, uh, they will be running from inside the cluster, and TestTube provides the entire kind of infrastructure and framework to do that uh, and you don't as as a tester or engineer all you have to do is you you know basically uh, hand your existing test scripts or you know get repository to test cube and test cube will do all the rest right it'll wrap that in a docker image it'll make sure that once again if you're running inside the cluster you don't need net external network access and you know anything anything kind of else related to that to challenges related to executing tests in Kubernetes, uh, test cube tries to handle. And so we don't have to like, so when you talk about Docker images part, mm-hmm. I don't have to maintain that. No, you don't. You just maintain your tests just as you would today. So See. for a, a, a Postman collection, you just have that in your Git repository or as a file, and then you'd, you know, you'd hand it over to test cube and test cube will do the heavy lifting of uh, have, having an executor, uh, you know, uh, which is a, a thing that runs tests inside a test cube for Postman collections. And you don't need to create any Docker images or things to wrap that. Uh, we will do that. We've done that heavy lifting for you. Um, and, and that's kind of the route we want to go because if you look online now, you know, how do I run my blah, blah, blah test in Kubernetes? It's, it's, it can be pretty daunting, especially if you're not super technical or into the Kubernetes world. And we really wanted to bridge that gap. So it's about um, making that easy for you as a tester or as a team, you know, as an, we're for running integration tests basically. So, uh, and since this is an integration testing framework, maybe I should highlight that. So it's not about unit testing as much, although you could, you know, technically run unit tests. It, it's more about testing your uh, application as a whole. It obviously has to integrate with, you know, CICD and GitOps and things like that. And today, what usually teams end up doing is they orchestrate their tests in CICD. So in CICD, they have these pipelines that, you know, run this test, run that test, and do a bunch of things that are really test orchestration and execution related. And we, 
what we what we'd like to do is kind of decouple those testing activities and definitions from your CI CD uh, and define those in test cube instead. Uh, and the reason for that is we uh, we want to make it possible for you to run tests at any time. So you don't have to run your entire CI CD pipeline to run individual tests. Uh, we also want to make it easier for you to switch CI CD systems, right? So if you're moving from maybe, you know, Jenkins, more legacy to GitHub Actions, uh, you won't have to redefine all your tests. Uh, you can just reuse the way you've orchestrated and defined them in Test Cube. Um, and uh, also, since we are running all the tests for you in kind of this Test Cube framework, uh, we also can manage test results in a consistent way for any type of test, right? So both uh, aggregating test results, uh, providing, you know, a test result analytics over time, to help you find out maybe which areas of your system are underperforming or where are things slowing down or where do you have quality issues, you know, the kind of stuff that uh, might be relevant in, in, in a larger engineering team and you're working with, you know, a microservices architecture, or whatever you might be building. So centralizing those test results, which is usually uh, a bit of a, also a, a challenge when you're running with, you know, CID, CICD systems, which you know we, you'll usually have to cobble together a bunch of different plugins to get that really working in a nice way. And we want to once again try to take away that heavy lifting uh, with uh, with Test Cube to really help just focus on creating tests, running tests, and and acting on the results. Um, it's obviously open source, <laughs> and uh, uh, there's no commercial component to it. You can go to GitHub. Uh, there's a, a, a obviously a nice repo here uh, where you can. Uh, find all the code and there's a documentation available as well that you know has a lot of different uh, shows you how to install and how to do a bunch of different things so it's 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 you know ho hopefully user friendly and easy to get started with uh, uh, for teams that are already you know deep into testing um, yeah Bruno do you want anything add anything to that <laughs> just uh, no, like yeah, pretty cool. The um, I think that the documentation is the, the best place to get started. And um, if you want to install it, probably like it's good to see that we also support Brew uh, Chocolate now. Um, or if you have Linux, you can um, use the binary directly from from GitHub. Yeah. So there's th what? Yeah. Go ahead. No, I was just saying, what were the testing frameworks that you mentioned that are supported? So for now, it's um, uh, Cypress for UI tests, so uh, for you know browser testing. Mm. It's uh, Postman for API tests and K6, which is a load testing tool. And we have yeah. um, executors that are s submitted, but we need kind of our official sign of approval for uh, Maven and Gradle, which are two frameworks in the Java world, which aren't testing frameworks in themselves, but they in themselves support almost any testing framework you can consider. So mm -hmm. through Maven, you can run Cucumber tests, you can run JMeter tests, you can run yeah. Selenium tests, you can run whatever you want. So, and through Gradle as well. Uh, so that really opens a huge world of, of different types of tests. And then we're actually working on a, an executor for SOAP UI, which uh, is another API testing tool, which also supports uh, more uh, uh, asynchronous protocols uh, if you're into that kind of thing. Yeah. So there's a bunch of tools out there. And once again, this, it is, uh, creating executors is something we want to encourage, of course. Uh, there's uh, our templates and tutorials on how to create your own executor uh, and how to plug that into Test Cube. So we you know, really want to encourage people to either uh, extend the existing executors if you're not happy with them or create their own for their own testing framework. Yeah, that's nice. So a, a testing framework that may not be natively supported, we can provide that via an executor. Exactly, exactly. And, cool. and, and uh, I mean, all the what we support natively are also executors, right? So you can you mm. can look at the, and they're all open source. So you can look at the executors yeah. for Postman Cypress and see how they are coded or, uh, and use those as a starting point if what you have is similar or you would like to get some, you know, inspiration yeah. there. Awesome. And what um, kind of, uh, no, yeah. <laughs> just one more question. Sure. What kind of tests, what kind of tests are we running? Performance-based and... So, so, uh, so the... Test Cube in itself doesn't really have an opinion on what kind of tests. So, you, you know, it, I think uh, Cypress and Postman are functional tests. Uh, so Cypress being functional for UI and Postman functional for API. Uh, K6 is a load testing tool. Um, mm. But we've also, we're looking at integrating uh, security testing tools, um, chaos testing, uh, you know, more 
you know, compliance testing or validation tools, right? To any any kind of tool that assesses the quality, I mean, uh, of your of your uh, application, and this could be, you know, as all the all those uh, traits that I mentioned. So we're not; it's not inherently limited to a specific type of test. So, and 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 we know that integration tests can, you know, be a lot of different things. You might have quality gates related to just compliance or policy. Uh, policies, uh, security, obviously, you might want to run some security scans on your APIs or your UI using corresponding testing tools. So there's nothing technically prohibiting a few from creating an executor for corresponding tools. And it's something that we're getting requests for as well from users. So it's something that's on the roadmap, yeah. of course, to add. Um, so you mentioned like adding new testing capabilities like chaos, for example. Mm -hmm. So there's tools for that uh, litmus, right? Mm -hmm. So how would you go about uh, adding that to test cube i mean is it in like the roadmap or what what is like the what are like the steps that you take in general to add like so, other tools functionalities into so, this yeah. so the step would be to to create an executor for those uh, uh the, those for litmus tests in your case so you would create mm -hmm. a litmus executor go to the documentation uh, there's a uh, and the executor template that we have, you can write your executors in, in any language you want. Uh, and uh, you know, from, from a test cube perspective, they are uh, containers that we spin up uh, with um, the actual the corresponding script or test mm -hmm. definition as input. So, uh, I mean, if, at a technical level, we're running jobs right under the hood, yeah. uh, and and so uh, they could be anything. Uh, and uh, and then uh, the litmus script, or I don't know how litmus works at a technical level. So if it's a script or if it's a, how those tests are defined, you would either, uh, and we'll look at that in just a little moment, uh, you know, wrap those in a test CRD, which is the CRD we have for managing test um, artifacts. Uh, or you could just point uh, mm. uh, test cube to a Git repo that contains these scripts. So, for example, for a Cypress, a Cypress test is often contains a bunch of different files, etc. And in that case, you just point yeah. uh, to that Git repo containing those files, and test cube will clone that repo and run the tests using those files or that content when it runs the test. Awesome. This is what I love about it being open source. So much uh, additional potential, and maybe we can run an event around this. Folks can add their own executors and yeah, definitely, uh, and that should definitely. be fun. Yeah, and there's a lot <laughs> also to. Uh, uh, we'll get back to it, I guess, uh, when it comes to yeah. integrations with existing tools and and all that kind of stuff. So, it, what's mm -hmm. really intriguing for us is, of course, how can we integrate uh, Test Cube into tools like you know GitOps tools like Argo CD and and Flux mm -hmm. uh, or or uh, progressive delivery tools like Argo Rollouts or Flagger, or you know, we're, we're talking to the captain team uh, about quality gates and test cube. So there's a lot of potential for us to, to integrate test cube and, and test cube provides this really nice abstraction layer, right? So you can you could define your tests and tests in test cube and then reuse those both for captain integrations and for your CI CD, right? So you wouldn't have to kind of uh, define your CI CD actions in GitHub Actions for running your Postman collection and doing it somewhere else. It's all kind of centralized. Uh, the the definition and execution of tests, and then if you run them, you know, from whatever tool or the CLI or whatever integration you might come up with, um, that's up to you. So it, we really try to to make that testing flexible. And once again, I'm I'm a little bit of a champion for QA teams and engineers because I've once again at SmartBear we we worked a lot with those teams and they are often not as empowered <laughs> as maybe uh, DevOps and, and engineers are when it comes to configuring tests or running tests, et cetera. And, and I think we really like TestCube to also maybe give some of the power back to the QA uh, uh, people. So anyone watching from QA, this is for you. Uh, and then allow you to kind of go in and say, hey, I need to rerun these tests, right? Uh, and, or just rerun that and make some changes here instead of having go to go to the DevOps and say, hey, can we rerun this pipeline? And, and which and they'll say, oh, I'll have to wait till later because it takes long. So there's a, a lot of uh, both both uh, ideological, but also, of course, very tactical needs here uh, that's driving this project. Awesome. Yeah, let's move forward and uh, check the demo. OK, sure. Well, just a couple more slides, I guess, um, a little bit repeating on what we've already talked about. So. Uh, we don't want to. Uh, we want to decouple testing frameworks from CI/CD. Uh, we we want to make it easy to use your existing testing frameworks in a Kubernetes context. 
Uh, we want to help you debug uh, why your tests are failing. It's something that we we haven't come that far in that road, but you know, TestCube could easily capture logs uh, from system under test and aggregate those uh, for you. You also see an example of, of how easy it is with TestCube to manage artifacts generated by your testing tools, uh, specifically Cypress, which records a video of your browser when it's running its tests and TestCube makes it really easy to access those videos. We'll show that uh, and uh, just help you also testers, once again, empowering them to be able to run tests for different environments. And so who is it for? Uh, well, uh, if you're doing integration testing for applications under Kubernetes, test cube is for you, right? Uh, I think <laughs> probably. Uh, so if you're using Postman or any of the tools that I mentioned, uh, th that's kind of who, who we think test cube will really help. Uh, if you're struggling with test results, you know, from different tools, and this is a bit, it's a different twist on things that we've already talked about. Uh, or if you're grappling with access restrictions related to Kubernetes, this is a common thing, right? Uh, you, uh, sometimes if you want to run your tests from the outside, so like running your Postman tests or your API tests or your UI tests, you don't want to have to open network connections to your maybe clusters uh, or you can't. For, it depends on obviously your organization and policies in place, but TestCube helps you kind of circumvent, circumvent some of those challenges. So there's, there's a lot in here that we just, once again, you know, uh, providing a more a compelling test execution package for Kubernetes. Yeah, and in traditional uh, the scenarios, people would trigger the CICDs to run the tests when they don't have access to the environments. But the advantage to that is that you cannot control in a fine way that which test you want to run, right? You need to trigger the CICD and it will run a bunch of them. Where in test, you can r run a single one if you want to, uh, even if you don't have access to the, uh, yeah. to the network. Space. So exactly, giving that flexibility to teams because often you might, like a common scenario is, let's say you've upgraded some component in your infrastructure, you've upgraded, you know, in Nginx or, you know, Prometheus or whatever, and you just want to make sure, I, I just want to rerun specific tests that you know are uh, uh, applicable in this scenario. You don't want to rerun your entire build and everything like or anything like that. So this is where that granularity around test execution could be really, really helpful. Um, the principles, I think we've talked about that. Uh, so the testing tools we support, uh, as we mentioned, Cypress, which is a browser UI testing tool uh, similar to you know, Selenium, which maybe uh, many are familiar with, K6, which is a load testing, and Postman. These are all open source tools, right? So none of this is kind of uh, uh, commercial. Uh, well, uh, Postman is free, not open source, but <laughs> almost. Um, uh, and uh, so there's two ways of interacting with TestCube. I, well, I guess there's three, but for a user, there's a CLI. I'll show that in just a little while. And then there's a dashboard that you, uh, or a graphic UI that you install in your cluster that you can, in, that you can uh, access either through port forwarding or uh, if you set up an ingress route to that uh, dashboard. And I'll show that. You can, of course, also integrate with um, the underlying REST API directly, although I wouldn't say that's a user interface, <laughs> that's more of a machine interface. Uh, so if you're looking to, you know, you know uh, trigger uh, commands or, you know, trigger a test after you've run a build or something like that, you might want to directly integrate with the API and not automate the CLI for that kind of thing. So um, it's, it's, an, it's a slightly different uh, way of, but for users, it's the, the CLI and the, the user interface. Uh, the dashboard are kind of the main ways, and I'll obviously show those in just a little while. Um, getting started, we talked about that. There's uh, a brew chocolatey uh, uh, installers for you know for Mac OS and uh, Windows, uh, and uh, there's Helm charts, and there's a, a Cube Cuddle plugin, which in itself uh, uh, can do the installation for you and do the upgrades for you. So you can install the Cube Cuddle plugin, and then run the install command on kubectl on that plugin and it'll install everything in your cluster uh, based on you know under it'll basically run helm for you under the hood uh, and uh, get get everything set up for you and so there's a, a, a bunch of different paths and we've had users the reason why we're we adding chocolatey well we do have people on windows who actually want to uh, try it there so uh, we really want it really important for us to to make it easy for users to get started we understand that trying a thing like this is a little bit of an investment in time, right? Uh, and uh, we really uh, 
obviously we're we're in awe and appreciate anyone doing that and uh want to make sure that that flow is as smooth as possible uh so that they're hopefully successful with getting test cube up and running and uh and running tests and it's all documented and we have a discord server you can always reach out and complain about things not working or you know ask for features or stuff like that um so before I just run into the demo, I just want to talk a little bit about the model. So in, in TestCube, we, have, we, call it, we talk about tests and test suites. So a test is basically a single test of some type. So it could be Postman, Cypress, K6, whatever. Uh, and uh, these are either stored, the, the corresponding test script is either stored in CRD directly in, in your cluster, or it's stored in Git. Uh, and and TestCube will pull that. Uh, artifact when it's time to run it, and you can parameterize your tests. So it's common, you know, common practice for testers is to be able to provide some parameters like username, password, or you know, if you're doing data-driven testing, you, know, you, you you might provide both input parameters and expected output parameters. Uh, and then you can orchestrate these tests into what we call test suites, uh, which is at this point just a sequence of tests uh, running after each other. Um, uh, and uh, there's a lot we can do here to make this more more um, flexible, you could run, you might want to run certain tests in parallel, you might want to have the output of one test be input to the next test. And there's a lot of things we're doing, we're working on there to, to make that uh, engine much more powerful. Uh, Something like powerful. also, just yeah. a random thought, like, uh, when you're running tests in sequence, and you make a change, that may not be affecting, let's say the first four ones. Mm -hmm. So it, you may not run those four tests again, when you so it's only going to run the tests based on the files that have changed, for example. Yeah, that's a, that's that's a really interesting idea. I don't think we've considered that. Uh, so we could, I mean, so we could definitely uh, uh, be on top of that, especially if you're managing the the the, the scripts in the CRD, right? So then, because then we would automatically see that these have changed, and we could we, we could even notify you these tests have been updated. Do you want to rerun them? And this is something we've talked a lot about. Is Kind of triggering of tests, you know, should tests run automatically uh, on this, you know, on a fixed schedule, or is or is it, uh, you know, when certain ac events happen in your cluster? I mean, we could monitor saying, you know, when this service gets redeployed, automatically rerun these tests. There could be logic based on labels or annotations or things like that. Or like you just said, uh, we could monitor the actual test scripts and make sure that if anyone updates a test, we automatically rerun that just to make sure that it still passes or to kind of uh, figure out what happened. So that's a super interesting idea. And I think there, there's still a lot we can do. Um, I, 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 one thing I did forget to mention, I'm going to, sorry, going back and forth. So I, I'm saying here that you can store your tests in the CRD. Uh, and uh, what this means is that the tests will be part of the state of your cluster. And what that means is that the cluster will always be able to kind of test itself and validate itself, right? So you can, you don't have any external dependencies. You're not depending on a Git repository being available or a external execution engine being available. The, everything needed to validate and test the application running in your cluster is in your cluster. And I think that's a compelling concept. It might not be for everyone, but it does kind of open for this, this idea of, of you know, self-validation and, and always being able to say, is, is everything okay in my cluster? Let's just rerun these tests. And not having to worry about is, is uh, have we updated the test in GitHub or is everything right? So I, I'm sure that's not for everyone, but you know, what is, uh, so, so uh, I think it, it's, it's definitely something to consider and that could work uh, in, in, I'm sure in certain envir in, um, environments. Uh, executors we've talked about, we, oh, there's also, sorry, another thing I forgot to mention, a concept of webhooks. So you can, you can ask uh, TestCube to send, send out a notification uh, when a test has started and finished at this point. Uh, so you could, you know, maybe, uh, uh, you know, post a message on Slack saying, oh, this test failed. Uh, and this is something uh, we, we can make much better. Uh, it's also in its, its, in its infancy around notifications and asynchronous integrations like that. But I, I mean, uh, obviously super compelling, get a notification in Slack saying, hey, this test failed. Here's a link to the results, uh, have a look. And uh, being to make that workflow more uh, integrated and, uh, and closer to the other tools that you're already using and hooking into your ecosystem. 
Um, okay, <laughs> sorry, yeah. talk a lot. Also, uh, the, yeah. there's there's also the artifacts you can you can start. So on the test side, if you are uh, testing framework that you use generates files, usually there's some configuration you have to do to get those out of your Kubernetes cluster, right? Your Cypress runs the UI test, generates a video. Then uh, if you don't use test cube, you have some you need to store them somewhere. And with test cube, we have a, a minion storage, which is basically a, an SPD one that stores those artifacts for you. Uh, and then uh, we'll show you in a bit, you can download those artifacts. So mm -hmm. it works for first Cypress, but if you use another, any framework that generates those kinds of of uh, objects that you want to see later um, can also catch those. Yes, yeah, so that, and that's, that's a great point, Bruno, because it also highlights um, the kind of infrastructure we're providing around these executors. We want to make it easy to write, right, to create executors and to leverage the functionality that TestQ provides. So just like, just like Bruno said, if you're writing an executor that pro creates some kind of artifacts, uh, that you want to make available to the user, and it could be you know screenshots, it could be I don't know whatever PDFs, uh, reports, reports of, of any kind. Uh, it, we've kind of provide we provide uh, ex those people who are creating executors with kind of the framework to do that in an easy way. So you don't have to figure out yourself where do I store this, how do I make it available to the user. We kind of try to take once again make that that heavy lifting uh, uh, something that we standardize inside of TestCube. Thanks, Bruno. Um, and a, another picture before we go to the demo, uh, just to kind of show the, the workflow, right? So here's uh, the happy tester or engineer. You create your tests using your testing tools, uh, which would generate you know, some kind of test artifact uh, and obviously highly test tool dependent. These you would import into your uh, cluster as tests and test suites, as we talked about before. Um, and uh, that import process, obviously, we have tools for that, or you can do it manually if you're a Kubernetes uh, um, wizard. And then using the test cube server, you could basically tell the server, then I want to run these test suites or these tests, and those tests will run against your application. And then you can use the dashboard to look at the results. OK, lots of talk, lots of talk. So demo, uh, just before I jump to the demo, uh, Bruno, anything else that I missed? Or Kunal, any questions? Um, I, I asked all my questions that I had. In okay, great. Okay, so, let's do the demo and then we can. Yeah. Okay. So there's uh, the command line tool. I, I'm not going to walk you through the installation process because I'm sure uh, something would go wrong uh, because I'm uh, usually clumsy at typing. Uh, so I've already installed it and uh, and uh, uh, it, this is running in a, a demo cluster we have running up on Google Cloud. And, you know, uh, it's a kubectl plugin. So uh, test you look at the tests. We, for example, we've defined. Uh, we have, as you can see here, there's a couple of Postman collections, Cypress, and a couple of KSX K6 tests, and uh, obviously, obviously similar for uh, getting test suites. Let's see what we have there. A uh, couple of tests here as well, and there's a lot of different commands. Uh, and this is, I think, reasonably well documented also on the website, or I'm sure it's superbly documented, sorry, and uh, and uh, help to help you get started with all these things. Um, I'm actually going to jump over to the dashboard because I think that's the the UI that many will use uh, uh, or, or immediately be exposed to. So this is, you can go to demo.testcube.io and this is, you'll, it's public uh, and you'll see what I'm seeing here uh, and uh, hopefully at least. Uh, and this is uh, pointing at the same cluster that I was looking at from the command line. So if you, these are the tests. Uh, and if you remember the output we had here, uh, we'll have the same tests here that we should be seeing here. I can uh, drill into each test and see the executions that were done for that test. Uh, and then I can drill into each execution to kind of see the output of the corresponding test. So these are Postman executions. Uh, let's see, we have a, a Cypress test here. Uh, here we can see the output of Cypress. Uh, and we can also see just a link to the artifact that was generated by Cypress. So if I click here, I'm going to get a video that I can you know, watch at my leisure. Uh, yeah, I don't we have to watch the video. But uh, you get the point that all the, all the artifacts generated by the tools 
uh, are, are immediately available. And as you can see here also, we're actually using test cube to test test cube, which is super meta uh, and actually uh, really helpful. Um, one really nice thing here is, is that we have CLI commands tab a little bit of everywhere. So if you're kind of the person that prefers to do um, things from the CLI, uh, you have command, the corresponding commands to what I'm doing in the UI are available here. So if I wanna, for example, download these artifacts from the CLI, I can just copy that command um, and paste it here and run that. And now uh, it's downloaded the artifacts and you see that it's put it in this folder here, right? So I can now open the folder and I can do that, but you'll have to trust me on it. Uh, and uh, correspondingly for test suites, for example, here, uh, here's the Cube Shop Sites test test suite. If I want to run this test suite, let's do that. So it's running now, and you'll also see here in the UI that it's running. So uh, once again, kind of confirming that we're actually looking at the same, same output. And here you can see the different steps of the test suite. So these are different tests that are run as part of my test suite. So these are uh, uh, all, I'm guessing, Postman collections, but there's also Cypress tests down here. And as soon as they're done, you can see they're kind of progressing one at a time. You can click over here to go to the corresponding uh, output from that test. So you can see that they all succeeded. And you know I'm happy tester uh, to kind of easily drill down uh, and into looking into the results and tests uh, as they are executing. So this kind of duality where it's, it, the dashboard makes it really easy to view the tests and test suites and drill down to executions and individual results and uh, see kind of, you know, what's passed and failed, but uh, obviously making it easy for you uh, with the commands, if you want to run things or do things from the command line, you can obviously go back and forth between those. Um, anything, any questions here on this? You, you, you copied like the, copied the commands, the CLI commands. Can we run yeah. it directly from the dashboard? So I, I can't, uh, no. Uh, so the only, only command we can run from the dashboard is running a test. Uh, and the reason we can't do that is because it's public and there's no authentication, right? So we don't want people to go in and start deleting stuff from the dashboard uh, or, or um, yeah, running any kind of mutating command that would could, could kind of disrupt the system. And this is one of the things we're working on now is to, is to provide authentication and user management to the dashboard so you can actually authenticate and control what users are allowed to do what. Uh, obviously, I have to have from the command line, we're piggybacking off kubeconfig and, and your, your conf cluster configuration. So you, I'd have to have that configuration set up locally to work. And that's how I have access to be, to be able to run those commands. But uh, uh, until we have proper like user management and, and authorization authentication functionality, uh, what you will able to actually do to mutate the state of your cluster uh, is limited. Uh, I mean, and of course, and not, not to encourage anyone, but you could go in and run all the tests here and click the run button. But I'll assure you that we've done that ourselves a couple of times. So, uh, and if we see a pattern, we'll have to do something about it. But uh, for now, that's kind of a, a, a risk we're happily taking because we want people to go in here and have a look at all, you know, what we have in here. And yeah, so, uh, but that's a great question. Great question. And, and, and it, it, it also, when it comes to kind of creating tests, right? So what, all the tests that I've shown you now are already in my cluster, actually. Speaking of, I have Monocle here, what a coincidence. And I've pointed it at um, my cluster, uh, which is the same cluster that we're all looking at. And here you can see the actual test and test suite objects that are in my cluster, right? So here, for example, you can see the test cube API failing test, which is an a Postman collection, which you can see here actually has the inlined Postman collection, right? So this is the same test that you see here. So test cube API failing. Um, and uh, here are test suites. Here you can see kind of what the definition of a test suite looks like. So it's basically a sequence of steps that runs tests. So using a tool like uh, Monocle or Lens or whatever, you can go and look at your cluster and see the actual, how the, what these objects are look like uh, and create the objects. Of course, there are 
the command line CLI tool has a bunch of commands to create tests, et cetera. But this is something that we want to really improve in the dashboard going forward is providing wizards or tools for, you know, creating tests uh, and orchestrating, you know, visually or your test suites and putting things after each other. And you can obviously uh, think about, you know, you know, a lot of, a lot of nice uh, visuals around uh, drag and drop and all that kind of cool stuff. But once again, that would be around mutating the state of your cluster. So we need to kind of put some little bit of an authentication layer on top of that before uh, before we go down the, that route. Uh, and another uh, feature in that regard we've been discussing is is just pointing test cube at your Git repository and saying, hey, find all the tests in my repository and test cube can scan through your repo and maybe it'll find some postman collections it'll find some you know i don't know cucumber tests or something else and it'll automatically import them into your cluster so you can start orchestrating them so there's a lot of workflows we can we are focusing on to make um test definition and make it easier for maybe non technical uh, or or people who aren't so kubernetes savvy uh, to to really get started and uh, be able to get their tests into test cube and run them um yeah uh bruno what else what else am i what am i missing anything else no i think you mentioned a um, very good point of the git integration so that that's like uh, on our roadmap that we also are exploring things we can do like this um you see on these executions um if we integrate that indication we could tell which person did trigger that execution as well we can tell about which the um, which uh, git commit was that uh, repo on when that was uh, executed so uh, there's a lot of things that might appear in the future uh, mm -hmm. when it comes to versioning uh, yeah. here at this and we could also <laughs> this is always like a new project we could <laughs> there's a lot we can do <laughs> yeah. uh, but for example you know if you run if you run a test and you run it again and it fails uh we can find out you know what how did your cluster change between when it when it was run when it passed and when it failed what what pods were updated what things changed and uh, could that help you um, yeah. understand why it fails because the, when we've talked to testers and developers one of the big pain points is is debugging a failed test right and what why did it fail so making it easy to get to your artifacts is one thing the other we talked about is, is we can collect logs uh, output from pods under system under test and and make that available as artifacts for your tests uh, uh we can ju just like bruno said we can detect well you know your last since your test passed the last time these changes have been made both to your test uh, and or your cluster uh, and maybe that could help be the cause of the you know why it's failing and and really providing the 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 engineers with a package of this is kind of the the th different findings we've collected for you from your cluster uh while uh, and uh, hopefully that can help and of course on top of that you could start layering a bunch of intelligence uh, uh and and uh, um and, and trying to pinpoint you know why the test might have failed and we'll just have to do those things one step at a time yeah so sort of like a git diff you can see what changes were made yeah and uh and if and if you're doing GitOps, right, uh, you could do a Git diff on what changes were made on your cluster state since uh, the last test last failed, uh, and maybe that helps. Oh, you've updated this config map uh, and you changed some password or whatever, and that's why it's failing. For example, I'm just making things up, but but uh, as you probably know, finding those small things uh, can be a lot of work. <laughs> just oh, I remember I changed this config map and I forgot to change it back take you hours to track that down uh, and, and if we can provide you with you know maybe this is where you can start looking at least uh, and, and uh, that usually is, is you know it could be a good start um okay nothing more to show here really there's links to github and documentation and discord and you know a bunch of things but um go go to demo.testcube.io if you just want to look at what i'm looking at and run some tests uh, and download some some videos uh, but otherwise uh, obviously, if you installed it in your cluster and there's a the command line has a, dash, a command that automatically port forwards the dashboard in your cluster to your local machine. So you can easily start interacting with the dashboard for your local install. So you don't have to work with ingress controllers or anything like that. 
Um, finally, looking ahead, and this one is for you, Bruno. <laughs> <laughs> uh, awesome, thank you. Um, the so yeah, there's just a collection of a few things we are um, working and planning to do in the future. So as as Ule said, we are working on authentication. Uh, we plan to make it very easy for people to create tests in a visual way. So that is also in Wordtime, so the user could use the UI and uh, yeah, could scan for tests, the user could, or the user could say which test does he want to import uh, and then redefine it there. Um, another feature is on the UI, um, we thought that it might be helpful. Uh, also, you got this also from feedback um, from users we talked to is uh, analytics on the test. So if you if you want to look back and see for the past month how many tests failed, how many of them um, passed, uh, you see you can see some patterns and you can see basically get, can get analytics of, of your tests. That, that's the idea here. Um, also plan to do CSD integrations. So make it very easy for uh, your GitHub actions to um, interact with test cubes, so tr triggering tests is an example, or, or creating them. Uh, so the, the, the goal is here, here make it uh, as, as effortless as possible, this uh, adoption. Um, another thing is, is we are all, all is auditing executors. Um, Captain is one integration that we are working right now. Um, it's just a small description of Captain. Basically, they have quality gates, which is things that, that analyze the uh, the quality, let's say, of your application before it gets further along in the pipeline. Uh, and the goal is to integrate with TestCube uh, so that it could run tests. And then if those tests passed, I guess that it has enough quality uh, to, to go to the next stage. Um, and the goal here is, is to, to make that integration happen. Um, artillery, uh, so we have, uh, we have um, external contributors also helping with this. Uh, some of these executors, if you want to also help, you can always free to add your executor here. We are uh, very much appreciated for that. Um, so artillery, uh, sub UI coming next as well. Uh, auto completion for your CLI. So everybody loves that. Uh, if you don't use that for kubectl, you should. Uh, and uh, as soon as you have for test cube, uh, it's also very helpful as well. Um, yeah, so yeah, variables uh, allowing you to add variables and obfuscate them from the logs, also something we are looking into. And whatever you ask for. So reach out to us. Um, if you have, if you go to the next page, Ole, we have our Discord uh, link. You can you can go there. You can send us messages, ask for questions, give feedback. Um, we are pretty much there all the time. And yeah, perfect to reach All out. the time. <laughs> That's what we do. <laughs> awesome. And I'll also leave the links uh, in the description below. So it's easy for you to find. But yeah, thanks a lot for sharing all and uh, Bruno and answering all the, the questions as well. Uh, really yeah. excited to see, you know, uh, because I've seen Monocle evolve as well when I first started using LMU. And let me tell you, all the viewers, they take uh, feedback very seriously. So if you give some nice suggestions, yeah. you can expect it to, you know, like they'll uh, work on it and think about it and take it in a very uh, good way. So yeah, thanks for joining and join the Discord channel if you have any feedback. And uh, I really appreciate you all giving the time and yeah, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye.